All right, let's talk cast iron. A um, couple things we want to look at. Now, I love cast iron because it's extremely versatile, and contrary to what a lot of people think, it's actually really durable as well. Uh, it puts up with a lot of punishment, and I mean, you just kind of figure, if a pan can last literally hundreds of years and still retain its functionality, uh, there's got to be something going on there, okay? It can't be nearly as fragile as a lot of people th seem to think. Um, a lot of people worry about using cast iron simply because they've heard that it's hard to care for, um, seasoning, things like that. So the very first thing I want to cover is seasoning. So let's take a look at a couple different cast irons I've got here. So we've got three pieces of cast iron here, and we're going to work with all three of them. This one you can see is in pretty rough shape, okay? You've got some rust in here, you've got some... Uh, oxidation, some carbon deposits, things like that. This one's in rough shape, but it can be re-seasoned and you, you know, put right back to use very, very easily. I'm gonna show you how to do that. This one is in pristine shape. I use this one very, very often. You see this is almost a glass-like surface. If you touch that, it's like very, very smooth. Um, it's got almost like that non-stick uh, surface to it. Very easy to care for, very easy to get this finish and to maintain it, okay? We'll talk about that as well. Um, this is the one I want to spend a little bit of time on. Let's take a look at it. Now this one at first glance looks to be in pretty good shape. Um, I actually use this one for toasting spices, sometimes cooking eggs, things like that. But if you look really close, up in the edges here, you can see these little kind of deposits that you know can flake off in your food. If you scrape at them, um, you know, you can get to, uh, you can see that, yeah, so you can see like little flakes come up. So this is uh, badly in need of reseasoning. Okay, you can see that right there. Reseasoning is very, very easy to do. The first thing you've got to do is get what's, the, we've got to strip this down to just the bare metal. And there's only one way I know how to do that. And that's to put it in the oven. We're gonna just pop our oven open here. We'll slip this one inside. We'll slip this one inside as well. Okay, so we're gonna pop those in. And we're gonna set our oven to clean. Oh, we gotta lock it first. Okay, lock our oven, set it to clean. We'll set it just to a medium clean, that should be plenty. Um, let that just kind of do its thing. So three hours, we'll come back, we'll take a look, um, and you're gonna be kind of surprised at what you see and what the next steps are. All right, so three hours and then plenty of time for the oven to cool down later. We'll go ahead and unlock. Let's take a look at what we got here. Okay, I'm gonna pull these out so you can get a better look. But you can see already, these are down to the bare metal. Okay, here's the awesomely seasoned one. Here's the one that just came out of the oven, okay? You can see those dust and, and like you can get right down in there on those little flakes. Those are what we're trying to get rid of and they're just, they're powder now, okay? And there's a little bit of rust. So we get that one and then this one. All the rust and carbon deposits and everything it's all just dust now now <clears throat> because this is bare metal um, we don't want to put any moisture at all on this so we want to get the dust off um, and then we're going to actually put some oil onto these so the best way to do that is just with um, a soft towel one that you really don't care about anymore because it's going to get all dusty so we'll start with this one and what we're gonna do is just kinda, just really gently wipe it out. Okay, now you're gonna look at it and be like, oh, that's rusty and stuff. That's, yeah, kinda. But once we put oil on it and season it, it's gonna be totally fine. Okay, so we'll just wipe that down. This one's gonna take a little bit more work than I'm gonna do offline because we gotta get down into each one of those little grooves and just wipe that clean. And look how nice that metal surface is just as we wipe that. Okay, this is gonna be awesome. All right, so this one has now been um, rubbed down, and I've also got some olive oil on it that I've rubbed kind of all into those grooves and everything. Got the back side of it as well. Um, let's go ahead and get started on this one. So we're just going to take just a little bit of olive oil, and it doesn't take much at all, just a couple drops. And I like to kind of just rub it in by hand and just work it through. But you want to make sure the entire surface of the metal is covered. I know this is a cooking surface, and that's what I usually start with. But you like to get the entire surface. You want to get up on the handle, get down in those little grooves there. We'll get the back side of it as well. We just want to get a nice thin coat of olive oil over the entire thing. 
So you just kind of rub that in a little bit. You can see I've got an excess down here because you can still see my finger marks in it. Up on the sides, not so much. We're just kind of spreading that around and working it through. We'll get the back of the pan and the outside edges as well. All right, so there's our pan all rubbed down, front and back. It looks lovely. There's our other ones. We're gonna go ahead and put these in the oven now. Um, so this is where the seasoning actually happens. Okay, what's gonna happen on a chemical level is this, uh, the olive oil is actually going to um, break down and bond with the surface of the metal because the cast iron is so porous. And this is where a lot of people get messed up on it and thinking it's very tender and delicate. Um, cast iron is a very porous surface. But once you put the oil on, which kind of absorbs down into the surface, and then you bake it to seal that seasoning, and essentially you're going to break down the olive oil, and it's actually going to adhere to the cast iron surface and um, essentially form that nonstick coating that we like. So it's, it's far less porous when it's properly seasoned than it is just as bare metal. Okay, now there's still some concerns there, and we'll talk about those once we've seasoned these, but right now let's get them in the oven. All right, so I've got our oven set at 400. Let's go ahead and pop these in. Now, you're gonna notice I'm gonna put this in upside down. Okay, the reason for that is you set it this way, as the oil, I mean, even though it's you know a very, very thin layer of oil, but as the oil heats up, it's gonna pool up in the corners and the edges there and create more deposits, which is what we just got rid of. So, flip it upside down, put that in there. We'll take our griddle, and for that very reason, I'm gonna put the griddle upside down in here as well that's the side I use more often. So we'll put those in there at 400, uh, 400 degrees for about an hour. Okay, so these have been in here for a little bit. We let them cool down. Oh, look at that. See, that's gorgeous. That is beautiful seasoning. And over time, you can see there's still a little bit of texture to it um, as compared to the uh, that other larger one uh, where it's a little more glass-like surface. Over time, as that seasoning builds up, you'll get that nice smooth surface to it. But this is this is a great season on this, front and back. That's beautiful. Let's take a look at the griddle. Beautifully seasoned on the back here. Nice smooth surface. And you can see all traces of the rust are gone. This is just beautifully seasoned, ready to work. So here's the thing. You gotta understand that the cast iron is very, very durable. Okay, it's, it's meant to last a lifetime, and it does. It's not nearly as delicate as a lot of people think. I've said that several times now. Um, just general use and care. Uh, one of the great things about cast iron is that it's so heavy and dense, okay? Which, the heaviness turns some people off to it, but there's a reason for that. You've got a lot of mass here, okay? There's a, a whole bunch of material, um, which means it takes a little bit longer to warm up, which is fine. Um, just, you know, put your cast iron on, give it a good 5-10 minutes to come up to temperature. Uh, that also means that you're not going to lose temperature very quick, which is an awesome thing, especially when you're cooking meat, like searing meat. Um, if you're going to do like, uh, you know, a steak or something like that, you want to get your, a, a good heavyweight pan because it's going to retain heat. If you're using just like a cheap-ass thin aluminum Walmart pan to sear it in, um, as soon as that steak hits the surface of the pan, you're going to lose a lot of temperature. Okay, whereas with cast iron where you've got all that mass, it's going to retain heat much better. You're going to lose very little heat as that steak hits the surface, which means you're going to get better caramelization, better flavor, okay, and just a better steak overall. Um, so that's one of the huge advantages of cast iron is you've got all that mass there. So it retains heat really well and it cooks a lot more evenly. As far as care, all you really want to do is um, just wipe it out with a, a, a damp towel after you're done cooking. If you need to use um, a scrub pad on it, get the Scotch-Brite blue ones. The blue ones are minimally abrasive. They won't take off any of this uh, beautiful seasoning or finish to it, but they will get off those little bits of food that tend to get stuck there. This isn't a, you know, like a Teflon surface. It is to a certain extent non-stick, but it's not like Teflon or anything like that, where it's, you know, things are just going to slide right off of it. It does take a little bit of care. Um, soap, it's okay to use soap once in a while. I wouldn't use it very often. Um, a lot of people think it's a bad thing to uh, let your you know, cast irons be wet for a very long period of time. Um, my wife's gonna kill me if she sees this, but I'm gonna show you guys something. So I've got a pan that I cooked eggs in. This is one of my other cast irons that I just showed you. It's been soaking in here. The eggs stuck to it a little bit. I got a little bit burned on. Um, that's been soaking for about six hours. I'm getting ready to clean that up. But six hours in the water, again, not a huge deal, okay? 
you've got some soap on, you know, get a little soap on there, scrub things off once in a while, it's fine. But more than anything, rinse it out, dry it out with a nice soft towel, um, and then I always tend to put a little bit of um, oil on the surface of mine, whether it's um, some olive oil, if you've got a little bit of bacon fat, um, what's easiest for me is I ha have a can of um, spray olive oil, like aer aerated uh, olive oil, just cooking spray, um, that I just spray right on them right before I uh, pop them back in the oven. And I store mine in the oven. If you want to store yours somewhere else, totally fine. It's just convenient for me to store mine in the oven. So, if you've got questions on anything cast iron, please post them below. Uh, would love to answer them, would love to address them. Um, but again, cast iron, very durable, awesome to cook with. I highly recommend getting it. It's very cost effective too. Um, you know, for this uh, griddle, I paid, I think, you know, 15, 16 bucks for both of my larger cast irons, the uh, 14 inches. Um, I paid about 20 bucks or so. Um, so they're very cost effective and um, they're going to last you a lifetime. So use cast iron. If you got questions, hit me up. Savor the day.